everyone, this is Kalimara here, and no, it's not Calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. In this video, we are designing and discussing another member of the Wild Word Girls group. That's not the official name, by the way, it's just a placeholder for now. The feedback for Fel Noir has been incredible, and it makes me so genuinely happy that people are enjoying the series so far. It feels so good to have something I can truly call my own and still have people enjoy it as much as my fandom content. If this is the first video you're watching of my series Wild Word, then I highly recommend you go check out the very first lore video that I put out and some of the Q&A and hopefully this will make a lot more sense. But essentially this is just my original magical girl idea because I've been designing quite a few magical girls from Miraculous Ladybug and then I did one video on Wings Club it just inspired me to finally make my magical girl ideas a reality. And if this is something you're interested in following, then make sure you subscribe to make sure you don't miss any updates. But before we get into the video, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, Surfshark. Ever since I started doing YouTube, I've received quite a few suspicious emails and hacking attempts on pretty much all of my social media. So I've been trying to find ways to increase my online safety and privacy. And Surfshark is exactly the solution I needed. Surfshark is a VPN service that keeps you safe and private by covering up everything you do online. That way, anyone that tries to take a peek at your personal data won't be able to see what you're doing or where you're doing it from. My favorite feature from Surfshark is that it actually lets you know about any potential security breaches in real time and stops websites from mining your data to push targeted ads on you. And not only are you able to protect yourself, but a VPN also opens up a whole new library of content that might have not been available to you in your current location. Sounds awesome, right? Go to surfshark.deal slash Kalimara or use my promo code Kalimara to get 83% off your first purchase plus an extra three months for free. Today, we have the beautiful, graceful, gentle-hearted leader of the group, Ulara, wielder of the snake aegis. Ulara is a play on the word ular, which means snake in Indonesian, and gives us a bit of insight into the wielder's identity. I think the way the name flows sounds very graceful and fluid, and it fits the character and the snake theme perfectly. So let me tell you more about her. Standing at six feet tall with graceful flowing hair and kind gentle eyes, she is a woman of compassion and the glue that holds the group together. Wise, decisive, with a good head on her shoulders, her teammates consider her the most dependable member, and it is a title that Ulara does not take lightly. Due to the eclectic personalities within their group, Ulara finds herself often taking on the role of parent, always looking after everyone's well-beings, providing comfort and encouragement, and ensuring everyone makes it out alive. Thus, the other members of the group often look to her for the final say. Swift, resilient, and quick to adapt to any situation, Ulara is as flexible mentally as she is physically. A team player who can take charge, she will go out of her way to assist her team members, covering their blind spots and openings, holding down the line when the others want to experiment, and is always hyper aware of her surroundings. This impressive feat is made possible thanks to the heat sensing ability she inherited from her sentinel, allowing her to keep track of all individuals in her proximity without direct line of sight. Much like a caring mother, she ensures their team has the best chance at success, often at her own detriment by putting her own comfort and needs last. Although the final decision often falls to her, Ulara is a benevolent leader who cares about the thoughts and opinions of her teammates. She is a great listener and considers their ideas with an open mind. She strives to view situations from various perspectives and broaden her own way of thinking. Though she lacks the experience that Fel Noir possesses in wielding an aegis, she has adapted much faster than her predecessor. Ulara is always learning and growing, and her awareness of this fact keeps her humble and grounded. Ulara does not take her powers lightly. She is a pacifist at heart and refuses to inflict more harm than is necessary. This is the reason why she is often hesitant to summon her Aegis weapon. She shows compassion to everyone she comes across, hostile or not. Her kind and gentle nature makes her hesitant to hurt others, but if one were to take this as weakness, then they will quickly come to regret their decision. 
Underneath her warm exterior lay a cold-blooded killer, detached from the plight of those on the other end of her blade. Her gentle eyes quickly become eerie and blood-curdling, once demonstrating compassion and comfort, now seeming to delight in the suffering she has inflicted. Indeed, her fluid movements and otherworldly grace mesmerizes and strikes fear into the hearts of many, much like the fearsome animal from which she derives her power. Though her fanged smile lacks venom, her grapples are near inescapable with the constricting strength of a python, playing well into her fighting style. Ulara is a melee fighter specializing in close combat. She is a master at hand-to-hand -hand combat, using a fighting style that often looks foreign to most, which she will gladly use to her advantage. Though some may recognize it as the Indonesian martial art of pencak silat, which weaves spirituality and dance into powerful strikes, grapples, and, and breaking limbs in half. Unlike the other Aegis users, Ulara considers her Aegis weapon a last resort, as the philosophy behind summoning her Kris demands bloodshed. Ulara is especially skilled in summoning and desummoning her weapons, capable of switching fluidly from one weapon to dual wielding and increasing her attack ferocity, transforming them into trisola daggers, which serve as her secondary weapon. Her weapons seem to have some degree of sentience and a magical connection to Ulara, as they are capable of returning to her hand if disarmed or thrown, allowing her to use them as ranged weapons. Thus, it can be said that Ulara is the most versatile fighter. Her sentinel stone can be found embedded in her left bicep, surrounded by luminous scales that also decorate her shoulders and neck. Her sentinel mark resembles that of a reticulated python scale patterns and paint her face like brilliant golden ink. Her gentle eyes shine with the colors of her two-toned sentinel stone, resembling jewels themselves. Her hair flows like a serpent's body possessing an iridescent sheen, ever changing from indigo to green and gold. It is not hard to perceive Ulara as a member of royalty, from the elegance she carries herself to the gold jewelry that decorate her body. The intricate pattern of the golden crown that graces the top of her head mimics that of her scales and is adorned by jewels, emphasizing that she is a person of importance. However, this does not mean that she holds herself in high regard. In fact, she's the complete opposite. Despite her regal appearance, Ulara places herself in the servitude of others. Despite her fearsome reputation as a skilled combatant, Ulara's true expertise lies in her solid understanding of first aid and emergency wound care. She uses her knowledge to help the injured, be it her teammates, innocent civilians that happen to get caught in the fray, and occasionally even their enemies often prioritizing their health and safety over the outcome of the battle. Her versatility places the burden of various titles on her shoulders. Leader, medic, caretaker, and cold-blooded slayer all in one. She strikes fear into the hearts of some and is a site of salvation for others. Just like her sentinel stone, she is multifaceted, and although she is a relatively new face among the Bougainville mists, she is quickly gaining notoriety among the whispers and gossip circulating around the town. Though she has mostly been written off as a rumor by the police, those who have encountered her tell stories of a beautiful, benevolent, otherworldly being with hypnotic, heterochromatic eyes and a gentle smile. Some have speculated that she is a lost spirit from the unnaturally fluid, serpentine way she moves, weaving between the trees and buildings as if her feet don't touch the ground at all. Her ghostly shawl and skirt trails behind her like a winding river. Some have speculated her to be a cryptid that takes on the form of a beautiful woman. Some rumors describe her as an evil creature and a bad omen, as her appearance seems to bring about disaster, and her resemblance to snakes cause some to fear her and associate her with malevolence. Meanwhile, others see her as a good omen, as her presence indicates that they will survive a near-death experience. Bougainville certainly holds many mysteries, and Ulara may just be the tip of the iceberg in the town's strange and sordid history. As I've mentioned in my video for Fel Noir, I want to try and use a different shape philosophy for each character. For Fel, I used diamonds and triangles, and for Ulara, the shape I chose were hearts. I gave her a heart-shaped face and emphasized the combination of soft curves and flowing lines. 
I wanted her face to look soft and gentle, so I made her eyes more downturned to give her a doe-eyed look and upturned lips to make her look sweet and to match the cute puppy dog uwu face that pythons have. I wanted Ulara to appear more approachable and friendly than Felnor, despite being a snake, which I thought was a fun dichotomy, but also demonstrate that she is someone to be revered, and I think I managed to accomplish that. If you are Indonesian, you might have figured out her inspiration, but for those who aren't, Ulara is inspired by Niroro Kidul, the mythical ruler of the southern seas, some even believing her to rule the entire Indian Ocean and queen of the spirit world. Green is a significant color to Niroro Kidul, as it is supposedly her favorite color. Many depictions of Niroro Kidul show her dressed in all green, and it is said that if you were to wear green to any of the southern beaches in Java and Bali, you will be sure to get dragged out to sea and drowned, so it is highly discouraged. Her top is heavily Majapahit inspired, but instead of a batik sarung, I decided to pull inspiration from modern silat attire, which uses trousers. This suits the character's preferences better as it would allow her to move freely while protecting her decency, and still have an homage to the sarung as silat uniforms often have a batik wrap around their waist. For Ulara, I decided to go with a sheer cloth style to flow like a snake tail and added an additional flowing shawl, which is an integral part of a Javanese dancer's attire because I think it adds an extra component of grace and artistry when she moves. To me, it makes her look more ethereal, and I really like that. Normally, being barefoot is the way to go for both Silat and Majapahit clothes, but I'm really bad at drawing toes and I feel like there are people who like toes too much, so boots were probably the safest option. In the end, I think her costume looks a lot like Mira's bodysuit from Aquaman, and I think it suits her theme perfectly. Though, I will say, I really struggled with her headpiece. Indonesian headpieces favor a lot of detail and intricate patterns, but for the sake of my own mental health, I wanted to do something a bit more simplified that would still emulate the same intention. Sharp upward points are a staple in many of these designs to resemble Hindu temples, but it really goes against the theme of soft curves that I wanted to use for her design. But then, I remembered that hearts do have points in their design. So I decided to use that as inspiration and created a shape that was both rounded and soft, but still ended in a point like an upside down heart. And with a bit of simple detailing, I think it looks just intricate enough to qualify as a Majapahit style headpiece, and I was really happy with how it turned out. Throughout this process, I tried incorporating more pink into her design because it would match her sentinel stone better, but I just couldn't find the right balance to make them look harmonious, so in the end, I settled on gold, which I think worked better with the green and tied in better with her gold accessories. Let me know what you think of Ulara's design. And that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. It really means a lot to me. I want to thank my lovely pond dwellers for always supporting me. If you want to become a pond dweller and get early access to my designs and videos, then you can join my Patreon. If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on all my social media. I tend to post a lot on Twitter, and if you want to send me fan art to get featured in my videos, then be sure to tag me on Twitter. If you want to chat with me, then join my Discord server. And if you want to see more of my stories, check out my comic and my Wild Word series here on YouTube because that will make me really happy. All the links are in my description, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!